Well, thank you for joining me again online. Uh, this is uh, New Life Ministries Church. It's our Sunday morning message for September 12th. And uh, we're going to get right to it. We'll be talking about sin today. Always a fun subject. Uh, but, you know, we're in a season uh, with God called the 10 days of awe. That period leads up to uh, the Day of Atonement. That's the biggest festival, the biggest holiday of the year for God and his people, because on that day, you receive forgiveness for every sin, and you walk away from that day knowing you've been forgiven and ready to start a new, uh, a renewed walk with God that's not burdened by sin. You say, well, I can get, I can get forgiven any day of the week. That's true. But too often we put it off. We don't deal with sin and it remains in our lives. So God put it on his calendar to, to have a day for us to do something about it. The 10 days leading up to that day are a time for praying, asking God to speak to you about the sin in your life, show you how to get rid of it, uh, uh, make sure you're confessing it and dealing with it so that it gets gone by the time the Day of Atonement, uh, by the time we go through the Day of Atonement. Anyway, let's get into this. First John 1, and we're going to stick with First John today because the whole word we need to hear is right there. 1 John 1, 5 through 7, God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him uh, and yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. If we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. So the question we want to ask is, what is God's definition of being purified from sin. Let's take a look at the word and sin. We want to answer that question. Uh, continuing in 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 through 10. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. That's pretty clear. It's not, there's no point in trying to tell God, well, I'm not really doing that bad. I don't have any sin. He says, we always have something. The only solution to having sin in our life is to confess it and allow the spirit of God to cleanse you, not just to forgive you, but to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. We ought to be confessing sins all the time. We ought to be talking to God and doing business with him. Let's keep going. You say, well, I'm not really doing that, that bad. I don't know if I have any sin in my life. Here, I'll give you a place to start if that's you. Uh, verse 15, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the father is not in him. Gee, didn't even look for a nice way to put that. All that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life is not of the father, but is of the world. The world is passing away and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. So we're, we're, we're into making too much money. We, we want too many worldly things. We're satisfied by pleasures that come from ungodly things. You, you fill in the blank for yourself. Anything that is connected to the world has a potential of leading us away from God. And, and, and you know, every week I tell you, it's good that you're not robbing banks and murder, murdering people. But if you're involved with the lust of the world and the flesh, it's sin that needs to be dealt with. Back to question number one, what does it mean to be purified from sins? 1 John 3 and 4, everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. There's a big one for you, for me. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. So taking away sins 
it, it means to remove it from our life, not just forgive it. Now, if you think I'm playing down the importance of forgiveness, good Lord, that's where we start. We, we commit a sin, we, we run to the Lord, we confess that, we receive his forgiveness, but we don't stop there. We look to God to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, which means he's going to teach us and lead us and empower us to get rid of that sin so it's not in our life anymore, and now we're living unhindered by it in our relationship with him. Continuing on this line of thought, little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. You realize that God is setting the bar much higher for us with respect to sin. It's good that we can be forgiven. That's the place to start. But God's goal for us is that we get rid of it. And whatever we're dealing with, Whatever we're dealing with, we deal with it and it's gone and we move on with God. That's his plan for us. I want to get to the place where I say, God, I know what it feels like because I'm your child. I cannot sin. I want to know what that feels like, Lord. If you'll say yes to the Holy Spirit in what I'm teaching you and what he's teaching us today, we're going to come to a new place with regard to victory over sin and with regard to our relationship with Jesus Christ. All right, got to clear this one up. If anyone sees his brother commit a sin that does not lead to death, he should pray and God will give him life. I refer to those whose sin does not lead to death. There is a sin that leads to death. I'm not saying that he should pray about that. All wrongdoing is sin and there is sin that does not lead to death. The sin leading to death that he's talking about is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, if you're blaspheming against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. I don't have time to go into, well, I'll give you this much about it. When you know that something is God, when you clearly know in your heart that it's God, but you still want to work against it, and you choose to work against it, that's blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. You can't do that by accident. It's a diabolical plan that you have to move against God. God says, Jesus said, that won't be forgiven. Now, he says right here, any other sin that's not blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, if you see somebody sinning anything but blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, you pray for them. Any other sin, that's the key word right here. Did you get it? If you are sinning a sin, not blasphemy against the spirit, you should pray about that. Let the Lord lead you in that and get the victory over it. It doesn't mean it's okay to tolerate it. It says if it's not the big ugly one, anything other than that, pray about that and get the victory over it. Now, Kind of wrapping this up, but here's something to keep in mind. We know that everyone who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. It doesn't mean we can't make a mistake. We're going to make them. Doesn't mean we, we, we are you with me? But when we, when we make that mistake, we confess it. We go do business with God and we get rid of it. No one who has been born of God, we know that he who has been born of God does not keep on sinning. He who was born of God protects him. That's Jesus protecting us. The evil one does not touch him. We know that we are from God and the whole world lies in the power of the evil one. Another translation says the whole world lies under the sway of the evil one. I, I, I put the note on your notes there. Have you been swayed by the evil one? If any sin on any level is in our life, the enemy has been affecting us, has been luring us and seducing us. And all he ever wants to do with sin is lead you away from God. We're not putting up with that anymore. We're going to see an end to that right now and from this day forward. All right. One more word from Jesus before we wrap this up. Jesus, uh, John 14, 15, and 16. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. 
I will ask the Father, he will give you another helper to be with you forever. How many people have you said, well, I love God, I love God, but you know what? I just can't get victory over sin. You don't love him like you think you do, and you don't know him like you think you do. Jesus speaking, Matthew 5 and 20, I say to you, unless your righteousness exceeds the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you'll by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 12 and 36, I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Jesus, John 5, 14. Afterwards, Jesus found him in the temple. This is a man that he healed, a man who was blind. He got his sight back. He said to him, see, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest a worse thing come upon you. Jesus said nothing at any time that would suggest we can have sin in our life and not do something about it. Now, here's what I want in your mind Right now, go out the door with it. We are in a season with God called the Days of Awe. It's, uh, there, it, it's actually a 40-day period. We are in the last 10 days of it right now. And the Days of Awe end on the Day of Atonement, which is September 15th, about three days away. During those 10 days, we are supposed to, if we're followers of God, listen carefully, we should be praying doing business with God, asking him to speak to us about the sin in our life. We should be confessing it. We should be asking the Lord to show us how to get rid of it so it never plagues us again. And we ask God and we fast and we pray and we make a commitment to God that we're going to get to the day of atonement, knowing we've done all the business we need to do to put an end to the sin in our life and start a renewed walk with God free from sin, and ready to walk in his will. That's the commitment we should be making. And when we get to the day of atonement, our prayer needs to be, Father, I've been doing business with you for the last several weeks or the last couple of months, whatever it's been. I've been doing business with you, Lord. I've asked you to forgive me. You've showed me how to walk in victory over sin. I plan on doing that. I thank you for forgiveness. I receive it today. And Lord, I'm ready to start a new walk with you right now, free from sin, full of your Holy Spirit, ready to do your will. That's what it looks like on the day of atonement. Now, if you're in the church service when James Nesbitt was here, thank you, my brother James, for speaking the word of God to us. He said, Andrew, you need to start singing anthems in your church. Well, the anthem that I will be singing, I got to go record it, but I'll do that. Go to our website, www.newlifeutah.com. You'll see stuff about days of all. You'll see prayers to pray. I'll have it all mapped out there. You go to that website, start clicking on days of all, start clicking on the Psalms. You'll see Psalms to pray, prayers to pray for the days of all, prayers to pray concerning repentance and victory over sin. And I'll even have some music there that you can worship God with from his Psalms to position you to receive an anointing of his spirit and power so you can, in fact, be forgiven and start walking in victory over your sins and be ready to begin a new, renewed life with God, walking in his spirit and in his will. Uh, let me point you in that direction. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for my brothers and sisters who join me online. They come for the word of God. And Lord, I sow this word in the good ground of every heart believing that it's getting planted there, believing that your spirit will watch over it and water it and cause it to produce good fruit. And the good fruit will be sin no longer has a grip on us in any way, shape, or form. And we start living in the victory of being healed and delivered and set free from every sin that has ever plagued us. I thank you, Lord, that we're coming into a new relationship with you. Boy, the Holy Spirit just put it on my heart. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, pray this prayer with me. Father, I thank you that Jesus came to the earth to die for my sins. I thank you that his body was broken so I could be healed. I thank you that his blood was shed so I could be washed and be purified in the cleansing blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ. You know, on Day of Atonement, lambs will be slaughtered to pay for our sins. 
That was a type. Jesus was and is the true lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. So if you pray in this prayer with me, Lord, I receive the forgiveness and the mercy. I know I'm being forgiven even now. My sins are being washed away. And Jesus, I'm asking you, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Save me from my sins and lead me and guide me in a new walk with you. Teach me how to break the power. Well, you're teaching me now, Lord. I receive your teaching to break the power of sin in my life. Be free from it and be free to walk a new walk with Jesus Christ. You being my Lord, me being your servant and enjoying the new life that is available to me in Jesus Christ. Father, I pray that for my brothers. I declare that over my brothers in Jesus name. Well, thank you for joining me here online and uh, we'll see you soon.